No doubt Billingsgate has thought up some ripe, rare phrases to describe the fish war, but Grimsby, the great fishing port, is the first field of battle. The Icelandic trawler Ingolfur Arneson turns into harbour and the war is on. It's Cockney millionaire George Dawson versus the rest. By bringing this ship in, Dawson is defying the ban by Grimsby fishermen on Icelandic fish, imposed when Iceland extended her fishing grounds to include areas traditionally used by British trawlers. Dawson is first aboard the boat. In the holes are 32,000 stone of fish, mostly cod. Right through the night, workers get the fish ready to hurry in to many parts of the country before dawn. Dawson says this about his rivals. Here is a ship being unloaded. Uh, the ship with the Icelandic fish that was, a, that it was alleged by the opposition would never arrive. And I'm very pleased that um, from tonight onwards, I think we can have fresher and cheaper fish for the housewife. The fish is crated and made ready for the auction. Despite threats by the Grimsby Fish Merchants Association of non-cooperation in the future, dealers are quick to answer the auctioneer's call. But even if they don't buy, Dawson has his own processing factory ready to deal with the catch. Now, that's 54 bob for a few gets. 50 bob a Thank you very much, sir. 50 bob for a many you like. And 50 up at 50. 50 bob, guys. There we are. Top row. 2, 4, 6, 25. 10,000 stone of fish is made ready for Billingsgate. Grimsby has its last glimpse of their new boy as he too leaves for London to see for himself how they fare. Trawler men turn photographers as the Dawson Rolls leaves the quayside. Down at Billingsgate, Dawson's fish sells readily and, as he forecast, gives his rivals keen competition. He orders them to hurry, so hurry they do. Even Dawson fish won't stay fresh that long.